What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. In today's video guys, it's 2020 obviously, it's the new year. So I wanted to kind of rehash and retouch uh, on my Wyvern 11 guide because uh, I know I still get a ton of Wyvern 11 questions, like a ton. Like uh, it's kind of crazy to me every time I hear them because like in my mind I'm like yo everybody's speed farming Wyvern 11 like it's already done right and uh, that's definitely not the case but before we get into that guys uh special shout out to raid shadow legends of course for sponsoring this video uh check out the short promo and then after that guys we will get into the updated 2020 women 11 guide for those of you guys who haven't heard of raid shadow legends raid shadow legends is a turn-based free-to-play gacha style rpg that brings a lot of your favorite elements into one game Elements like campaign, which is like your basic adventure mode. You have dungeons, faction wars, arena, of course. And then if you're with a clan, you have clan bosses as well. And not only that, Raid Shadow Legends recently became available to play on PC via the Polarium Play Launcher. You could pick up your progress wherever you left off on mobile and vice versa and just have a great time within the comfort of your own home. And with over 400 heroes to choose from, from the mighty Sir Nicholas to my personal favorite hero, which is Arbiter, you have a ton of opportunities to create the perfect team with the perfect champions as you play this game. Download Raid Shadow Legends right now with the special links and get 100k silver, two clan boss keys, 10 mystery shards, and one free champion adjudicator that you guys see here. Now, keep in mind, guys, you're only going to have about 30 days to collect these rewards. You click the link, you redeem it, you'll find your rewards in the inbox in the game. And if you guys are looking to find the inbox in game, it'll be right here, this little chest right here with the red circle on it. You guys will have a bunch of rewards and stuff in here that you guys can collect, including the champion, the adjudicator. Again, guys, make sure you take advantage of this opportunity. The links to download Raid Shadow Legends will be directly above all the other text in the description box below. You guys just use that link, get your rewards, start playing Raid Shadow Legends today. All right, guys, so now that we're back, let's go ahead and hit this free summon. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, yeah, look at that five stars. So good. Oh, yes. Mm. <laughs> all right but but anyway what we're going to be looking at first is we're going to be looking at my team uh we're going to be breaking down some stuff we're going to be talking about the basics and i'm going to walk you guys kind of through um like getting your first wyvern 11 team together and then how to transition from wyvern 11 uh like safe team to speed i know a lot of people have a lot of trouble and Probably within the first five minutes of this video, we're going to fix your Wyvern 11 team as soon as I can figure out how to uh, get to my team select screen here. It's my first time. Apparently, I've never played Epic 7 before, uh, but we're going to help you guys get this rolling because now there's a lot of stuff. We're going to talk about the free to play way. We're going to talk about uh, the pay to win way. We'll talk about all the ways to help you guys out. So this is my Wyvern team. It clocks at about a minute and a half. Um, it could probably go faster if I went for maybe like a double click. Leave uh, here just to kind of clear the wave quicker, uh, or if we ran like uh, another damage, like a water damage still up front here with like a defense break or something like that uh, with attack buff. But there isn't one that does that just yet. Oh, well, Tywin, I guess Tywin, Tywin could probably do it, uh, but that's neither here nor there. But this is my team here, and uh, again, we're going to talk about how to transition from like a basic team to this team. Now, before we get into this, guys, let me just add some value up front. If you guys are running a Wyvern 11 team, such as this team, and just because like you've seen teams like this online, if you, you might have structured this, but your gear might not be there yet, the easiest way, and this might fix your Wyvern team right now, if, if, if this, what I'm getting ready to tell you, fixes your Wyvern 11 run so you can auto, uh, I want you to just uh, leave a big heart or press the number one in the comment box, all right? <laughs> but if you guys are running a team like this and you find a little success, all you're going to do is just take one of your damage dealers out, add another healer. That's all you got to do, okay? So whether that's going to be Motmo, whether that's going to be Angie, figure out who your front line is going to be whether it's a healer or whatever or if you guys are running a night like crows it or whoever as your front line just add another healer okay that's all you got to do so run double healer run a healer in a tank whatever you got to do um just do it and in literally you'll see a tremendous difference it might not be as fast as you want it to be based on some of the youtube videos that you guys have seen but at the end of the day it'll work and if it works just go ahead and type one in that comment box for me, you know what I'm saying? Add value up front. But anyway, uh, first I want to address a free-to-play team. I know a lot of you guys are like, oh, it's so hard to get gear. But nowadays, they practically give you the game. 
all right now what i mean by that is when we go over here to the heroes that you guys can collect um what you guys are going to focus on from the beginning and this is what i recommend now if you haven't done this from the beginning don't fret you can definitely make adjustments but what i recommend from the beginning with with the, your selective summons you're definitely going to go tywin uh with clarissa and or karin the reason i say that is because with tywin plus clarissa karin gives you two defense breaks um they're going to basically give you free gear uh, with you know the sets that you get for clearing adventure mode yada 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 and from there it's literally only a matter of plusing your gear all right so now if you guys didn't go that route if you guys didn't start with time and you guys got like vildred because you watched the video from like 1972 and they were like vildred or they were like says and you got like says and destina <laughs> for some like again from epic 7 video from 1972 were we not um and this is where your connection heroes are going to come into play so first off and foremost uh crozet is perfect for being your front line all right period all right so crows it plus furious you have one damage dealer this damage dealer happens to have defense break so along with so with furious and crows it you have your front line and you have one of your damage dealers so that's two birds with one stone now literally all you have to do at that point is add either two healers or one healer and one damage dealer now you're like, all right, D, well, if I just need one heal and a damage dealer, who can I use? Well, that's where Angie is going to come into play and or Montmo. Now, up front for beginners, if you have Angelica, I will probably just use Angelica. You guys are going to be like, but why, D, everybody says Momo is just OOP. Well, the reason why I say that is because Momo takes some investment. And if you guys are free to play, you're not really going to just crank out 440 runes, you know, out of your tailpiece and just be like, all right, Momo's ready to go because it's probably not going to happen, right? So if you have Angie... Angie's the easier unit to use up front while you continue to build Montmorency. After Montmorency's done or skill trees max and all that other jazz, then you can go ahead and, you know, throw up in there, right? But until then, a hero like Angie or any other water type healer uh, can fit there and pretty much be okay, all right? Now, once you have that healer, so let's just assume Angelica plus Crozet or Montmorency plus Crozet. Now you also have Furious, again, and what I recommend is two defense breakers if you can pull it. So that four slot could be your Karin, could be your Clarissa. If you're not running with Karin or Clarissa, what's going to happen is then you're going to probably just run with your girl Alexa. Is Alexa here? Yeah. Alexa, hands down, is probably one of the most OP heroes in the game for Wyvern 11. All right. So if you guys are having trouble deciding which units you should build or how to structure your Wyvern 11 team, that's pretty much it. Now, the beautiful thing about this and the reason why I recommend two damage dealers versus three damage dealers or 50 damage dealers is because that's how much gear they're going to give you. As you go through the game, you start progressing. Not all of your gear is going to look like this, right? So when I get a lot of questions on stream, like, yo, D, you know, how, how do I set up your car in, right? Because I got car in. And you guys are like, how is your car in build? And you guys see her on Rage and people are probably like, oh, damn, I got to go build the A11 team. Absolutely not. What you guys are going to do is, and this is something that I really advise that you guys really get set up as soon as you get into the game, is you guys are going to go into your high command. You guys are probably by now put orb sorbs into this thing. And depending on what currency you need is what you're going to go with first. So what I'm saying is if you guys need ancient coins, because now you guys need charms and stuff like that to plus your jewels, then go with ancient coins. However, if you need gear, it might help for you to split this or run both um, to, or improve your things so you can start getting these conquest points here. Now, the reason why I say it's important to get conquest points, because if you guys are starting the game out, and I don't know why I just clicked the bartender, but if you guys go to your shop and you go to the conquest point shop, what you guys will see here is they got a ton of different stuff, right, for the different seasons. So if you guys are in this shop, you guys can buy, obviously, arena gear. Now, in order for you to buy the current season for honor season, you have to get these points right, which means that you'd have to rank to save those up. However, um, you can go to the previous seasons, and if you guys are starting this game, or if you guys haven't bought these pieces of gear yet, uh, you guys can look at and reference the pieces that I bought for myself to kind of make a decision here. But this is gear that you guys can get, and, you know, by getting access to this, Minus the 67 gear. Don't buy the 67 gear, all right? This is, that's what we had back in the day, all right? And, and that's just what <laughs> that, that, that's just what we used back then. Uh, the victory season is also the speed set uh, that I also purchased. And if you guys are starting the game, I will start stacking these conquest points as fast as you can. So you guys have access to buy this victory season gear um, and then also get the warfare season gear. So the gear with the attack set, not that one. Just kidding. 
I just said don't get that one. All right, <laughs> get the gallantry, right? So with with this, with the attack sets, like you guys can see that I bought the ring, the neck, the boots, and the the weapon. Um, you guys can fashion putting together a set. So what I mean by that is if you take that arena set and you mix and match with pieces of that 70 set that they give you for free, uh, once you get to close to the end of the adventure mode, you already pretty much have a full set um, done, you know, that you can use probably for the remainder of your, your gameplay experience here. And that's one set done. You take that speed set, you know, from the arena and you can do that as well. However, if you want to be kind of lazy a little bit, you can use that destruction set that they gave you that destruction and uh, blade or crit crit set that they gave you until you get to a certain point in the abyss where then you can use that 85 gear uh, or up to the 85 gear if you want to use it as a transition. And then now you have two sets of damage dealer gear on both heroes. And then your primary responsibility at that point is just to get your gear to plus 15. It really takes out all of the headache uh, of really structuring your damage dealers because those sets of gear pretty much have all the stats that you need, right? So let's say an ideal situation, you guys started with Tywin, you have Karin. If you didn't start with Tywin or Karin or Tywin and Clarissa, then you went with Crozet out of your connection heroes and you went with Furious, right? And Alexa. Now you have those three. Now you just need to add a healer in. So you put an Angelica right or Matmo or whoever the hell. Um, and now your Wyvern 11 team is done. So once you have that, now we're going to talk about stats. As I mentioned before in other videos where I talked about stat requirements, the most important thing you're going to be paying attention to when building damage style heroes is just the overall flow of stats that you're looking for. So what I mean by that is don't try to overcomplicate it. Don't try to think about super duper advanced builds or things that might matter later, you know, when you're 76 years old and you don't know what kind of tennis balls you want to put on the bottom of your walker, right? So because you don't want to make noise, you know, unless you rolling up on a, you know, on a grandma and you're trying to holler like, hey, cute. Beauty, right and she's like what kind of tennis balls is those on the bottom <laughs> but try not to worry and overcomplicate the details when you're building a character so if you're looking at a damage dealer think not about the set or the you know do I need speed set or rage set or attack set or whatever? Because granted, we already have an attack set per se uh, from the arena because you guys have been getting your conquest points right via the, the little treasure hunt thing plus whatever arena you've been doing plus you got the one for free from the adventure set and let's say you fashioned an attack set. So as you're rolling this gear, the primary thing that you're focusing on is trying to get your crit rate to um, 85 to 100%. The reason why I say 85 to 100% it's because if you're using these heroes and their water or ice or whatever you want to call them for uh, Wyvern, right, you're automatically going to get a 15% crit bonus. So <clears throat> you can stress a little bit less and get the 50%, right, and then you'll be good to go. Or sorry, get 15%, excuse me. So if you can only make 85, that's okay. Just work on it over time so you can get that crit rate to 100% if you plan on using that hero outside of the dungeon. So what you're looking for is 100% crit, okay? 85 to 100% crit if they're ice. If they're not ice and you're running like some fire hero, fire fire damage or something like that, then 100% crit. You're gonna try to get as much crit damage as you can. Now, my rule is crit rate and attack power first. So try to go for 4K attack, 100% crit, right? Then after that, get as much crit damage as you can after you have those stats in place. So if you're only able to get super duper high attack and then high crit, but your crit damage is like 220, that's okay. Understand that this is a process that's gonna take time. It's not gonna happen overnight. It's not gonna happen in a week. I mean, although it could if you got super duper lucky, but all your friends would hate you, <laughs> you know, that play this game. But it's just an overtime thing, so try not to overstress yourself if you're not having the stats that Joe Schmo has in the YouTube video who's been playing for who knows how long, right? So that's typically what you're looking for for damage, for like your initial damage dealers when you're building your Wyvern 11 team. You can pretty much follow this generic prescription for all damage dealers um, early on, right? Because again, you just want the high crit, high attack power, as much crit damage as you can. And then all the other stats will come more into play as you start to um, branch out and get more creative in your builds. Now, one thing I would recommend is if you can swing it, especially if your character is responsible for landing harmful effects, specifically defense break, try to get a little bit of effectiveness on them if you can manage it, right? So if you got some effectiveness rolls in there and they happen to roll, don't be upset. Like, you know, 40%, 50%, 
will do it, right? Um, again, don't stress if you can only pull like 20% or 30%, it's okay. But as you start to grind and continue to improve the quality of your gear, then just make those small increments and you'll start seeing the consistency of your run improve. Now, the biggest thing that I need you guys to understand, and this is why it's so important to plus your gear, is if you guys are sitting on gear that's like plus 10, plus 9, plus 7, plus 4, um, and you guys are like, well, I just don't have any gold because, you know, there's a gold issue, it's because you're rolling on too much gear. Like, you're still not going to have any gold even if all you did was roll on the most perfect gear, um, but the reality of it is is your your attention span is, might be a little spread too thin. So what you want to do is, and this is why I'm identifying like a sample team for you guys. Again, two defense breakers, two damage dealers, right? That you could branch out from. Because what this is going to allow you to do is then get that laser-like focus, get the sets that you need on your damage dealer. And how you do that is using a combination of the free damage sets that they pretty much give you, just plus getting those to 15 so you can get your stats as high as you can. Once you get your gear to plus 15, what that's going to allow you to do is then maximize the amount of damage. Now, in terms of artifacts for your damage dealers, the Daydream Joker all the way. Listen, you ain't got to think about, you know, Ronald Madonna, Grape Ape, uh, Grape Ape, Octonauts, My Little Pony, none of that. You don't need any of that on your character. All you need is a Daydream Joker, relatively easy to get. It'll set you up. You can use it on any of your damage dealers, whether that's Alexa and Furious, whether that's Karn and Clarissa, whoever you opted to put in your Wyvern 11 team, to be a damage dealer is going to be on Daydream Drugger. That's it. So, again, 100% crit, much attack power as possible. Let's start at 3k, just to make it the magic number. And then after you have the high attack, high crit, then at that point, as much crit damage as you can. Right? So, so that's going to be the thing. Obviously, if you can get all three there, perfect. Now, since we're using Furious as an example here, uh, one thing I just want to throw out there and mention to you guys. If you guys are having issues where... Your Furious is going not in the right turn order and you want him to go first so you can use defense. Just try to, to kind of play with the gear a little bit and make sure that his speed is higher than, you know, at least 10 speed higher than whoever your damage dealer is. So if I'm running Furious and Karin and my, my Karin is 128, then I'm going to try to get my Furious to like 138 if I can, if that makes sense. Um, but if you can't, don't fret. You know, again, these are optimizations that you guys can make over time. Now, let's get into these supports because I want to kind of talk to you guys about this because um, I know there's a lot of questions about, well, who should I run on defense? Who should I not run on defense? Or, or excuse me, not who should I run on defense? How much defense should my characters have? How much HP should I have? And it's kind of a balancing act. And we'll use Angelica here just because... I know a lot of people have Angelica. She's a pretty coveted unit. She's really, really good. Um, this is a great example because she's still on 67 gear, right? Even with these stats, we got an 85 ring and a 71 boot uh, that we got from the Christmas event uh, last year. Okay, so <laughs> she's on some retro gear and she does her thing. I'll show you guys this gear here so you guys can see this completely accessible because um, they give you this stuff. Like this boot, I got for free, right? I just did the Christmas event. They gave it to me for free. The only thing I had to come up with was this ring. And as you guys can see, this ring is super duper trash. There's no speed. It's super high attack value, right? All we have is the defense, the effect resistance, which are also low values. So this rune could easily be any other HP ring in the book. And then the necklace is a 67 necklace that you can buy out of raid if you guys want this. Uh, the reason why she has this is because they gave this for free to everybody at the time because of a hiccup that they made. However, this necklace could easily be replaced during this event that we had where we got the free necklaces. Um, if you guys are looking at this video after the free event was done, I'm sure they'll probably be given even more free necklaces. Or if you guys happen to get a free necklace out of the chest uh, while you guys are doing an adventure, if the goblin treasure chest uh, little thing comes up, or if you guys opt to get a health percent necklace out of Automaton Tower, that can also go here because uh, like you guys can see here this is why it's so important to get your gear to plus 15 because even at 67 and 71 gear we're still rocking 17k health with 1500 defense right so again nothing too crazy here on the weapon uh, we got the 67 helmet that you guys can see here that rolled decently and then we have also have a 67 chest that also rolled pretty decent right this gear probably rolled better than most of my 85 gear which is sad to say but true now, when you get into your supports, primary rules apply, Health, as much health and defense and some speed if you can muster it. That's it. Uh, you can potentially get some effect resistance, but try not to uh, like maximize the difficulty of your build too much too soon. So if you're looking at a support, when you're trying to build a support, how fast, how tanky can I make them? 
that's it. That's it. So, same thing with Crows It. For those of you guys who are looking at Crows It, hold on, let me see. I think my Crows It is five star, but he doesn't have any gear currently. But just to talk about Crows It, if you're building Crows It, you just want as much defense, as much health as you can. He might necessarily not even need speed because all if his if his job is to take damage up front. All you're going to do is just leave that dude in front and let him take damage. Now, let's say you're running Angelica or Montmo as an off healer with like Rod of Amarius to maximize your healing, right? Then what's going to happen is then at that point, you just want to make your healer that's in the second slot as fast as you can, right? Obviously, and as tanky as you can. So that way they can cycle their turns faster and keep your front line alive. If you guys are asking for stat specifics, the the bare minimum that I recommend is this, okay? To get into Wyvern 10, if you guys haven't gotten into Wyvern 10 yet, it's 800 defense and 10k HP roughly for all of your heroes because you never know who's going to get attacked because Wyvern 10 is super duper random, right? Now, once you get into Wyvern 11, what I recommend is minimum, okay? 14 to 16k HP, right? And again, plus 15 year gear, um, you know, it's, it's a big thing because, like I said, she's like on 67 gear. We could probably pull another 5k health if we upgraded all of this to 85, but I want you guys to see this as an example, okay? So, 14k minimum, okay? 14 to 16k, and then for defense, I recommend 12 to 1400. Now, if you have super high defense, if you have 2k defense and only 14k HP, then that's something that you could work out as well. And I'll show you guys my DN here uh, so you guys can see that because my DN has actually very low HP, uh, but she has high defense. So there's kind of a sliding scale between defense and health. But again, you want to get as much as you possibly can. Now, if you guys can muster some effect resistance in there, it absolutely can help for your front line, especially if you're running like a healer. Like if you guys opted to run like Angelica and Montmo, for your for your dungeon then that's something that you guys could look at as well um because then you could just kind of you know maximize and you know kind of play with things and move stuff around but ultimately it just depends on how you have your team set up but once you have those stats guys like let's say 15k health with like 1400 defense or 1500 defense you're pretty much good to go everything after that is just maximizing your damage output and you'll do that by plus 15ing the free attack gear and stuff uh, or damage gear that they give you and then filling up your support gear is just a collection of playing the game doing your automaton tower getting those rewards and then of course doing whatever wyvern level that you can do uh, there's a ton of gear that you guys can get throughout the labyrinths and throughout the stages that you guys go through the story that could definitely definitely help your supports out but the the fact of the matter is is just getting the stats on your supports uh, I recommend speed for your um, for your healer, and I recommend if you're running like Crozet again for the front line, just try to make them as tanky as possible. The more damage your front line can take, and the faster, of course, your healer is. Uh, 160 speed is really good. Like you don't really need much more than that, but you can. You're more than welcome to get more than that if you can. Uh, but try to just make them as tanky as possible and as fast as you can. Again, guys, the, the challenge to this game is identifying the gear that you need. So now that I kind of broke this down to you, again, defense, health, speed for your supports, effect res if you can get it. For your damage dealers, it's just going to be attack, high attack power, crit rate, and then as much crit damage as you can, plus Daydream Joker. After that, it's literally just getting the gear that has those stats. Plusing it to 15. If you guys are struggling in Wyvern, most of the time, I can, I'm can. i willing to bet that your gear is still like plus 10, plus 11, plus 7. Because you're rolling a bunch of other gear. Um, and you might just be a little bit all over the place. But if you just reel it back in, identify which heroes you're going to be using for your Wyvern 11. After that is good to go. And then, as I mentioned to you guys before, what I said I would do is I was going to talk about getting from like a slow run to a faster run and all that really involves is just pretty much kind of upping your damage i'm not going to break down like full speed runs but i'll break through i'll break down like just one run so you guys can kind of see how this happens so what you guys are going to see here is dn is my fastest hero so she's going to buff attack right and this is when you're getting into speed runs without having to run two healers and stuff like that which will come much later Right, so then what's gonna happen is SSB is gonna AOE. Now, ideally, I would want somebody here that could AOE and just kill here, 
because after they're dead, then my run is, you know, 20 seconds faster, and then we're just good to go. But because SSB has a counterattack, she's just going to cleave, but that can kind of symbolize a double cleave if you guys are running like that. And then the most important thing is that the next hero up is going to lead with defense break. So when you get into the fight, and this is why I recommend having two defense breakers, and uh, that's why I believe that setting up like Furious and Car under Tyrant and Car under Tywin and Clarissa, it's a really, really good start. But now what's going to happen is now Luna's going to come in and she's going to position the death break. Um, and then so having multiple death breaks gives you less opportunities to fail, especially if you have some effectiveness on your heroes. And this is why I recommend Karn because Karn is just, she just doesn't like the dragon. All right. <laughs> and then it's just really about order of your heroes. Okay. Optimizing your order. And then after you optimize your order, maximize your damage. And then once you maximize your damage, you'll find that you can get away with a lot more because your front line is not really going to take as much punishment because you're not going to be in the fight that long. But the longer you're going to be in the fight, the more tanky stats that you're going to need to have, if that makes sense. So um, when you're diagnosing your team, and this is something we're going to close this video out with this guys, when you're diagnosing your team, if your front line is dying too quickly, chances are the rest of your damage dealers might not be dealing enough damage. So if that's the case, then strengthen your front line if you're unable to strengthen your back line so your front line can stay in there longer. Now, if you're dealing enough damage, let's say just like right on the cusp, again, make sure you go back and maximize your gear or on a free gear removal day, start to look at gear that you can maybe move in and maximize your stats. Maybe you're missing crit. Maybe you don't have that 85% crit because if you're missing crit, it's like having zero crit damage, basically. Um, and that could be a lot of the damage you're missing. Look at your turn order. or your defense breakers going before your damage? Do your defense breakers have effectiveness? You know, diagnose those things and really start to look at all your stats and if people have the correct stats that they need. And then from there, uh, you will find that you probably won't run into any more issues with Wyvern ever again. So anyway, guys, uh, with that being said, that's all I wanted to cover today. Just wanted to give you guys a 2020 version of Wyvern since, you know, we've learned a lot over the course of this year and some change, especially with all these heroes, new heroes coming into play. I wanted to give you guys like a strong framework to really work from uh, so you guys can get your Wyvern 11 teams dialed in. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, it's your boy, Damone, and we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.